Bristol Rovers have been a very highly requested team for me to rebuild, even though at the moment in time they're currently sitting 6th in League 2. They're actually having a pretty decent season and are looking at potential promotion via the playoffs. I've done a load of research on regards to how many trophies Bristol Rovers have won and it turns out they've never won the Champions League and that is where we come in because today we're going to take Rovers from where they are right now to the top of the freaking world by making them European champions. If you're going to enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, smash the shit out of that subscribe button if you are new around here. You're looking to hit 3,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have yet to see one of my rebuild videos before, here are the rules. The main objective of this rebuild is to win the Champions League. I can make any transfers that I want, making it as realistic as possible. All games have to be simulated, but the Champions League final has to be played. Now that you know how this works, strap yourselves in and enjoy the video. So beginning our journey with Bristol Rovers in season one, we've been given just under 1.5 million. As you guys know, I always check out the Youth Academy at the start of every rebuild just to see if there are any hidden gems that could turn into massive superstars for our team. And I think we've got three of them this time. For starters, we've got Pavel Rabar, the Slovakian keeper, is 17 years old, 59 rated overall, with the potential to go between 67 and 91 rated. Secondly, the one with the highest potential and the highest rated by a mile, Dexter Gardner. Can play on the wing he can play a central attacking midfielder 65 rated at 16 years old this guy looks very promising and the youngest and lowest rated of the bunch isaac thomas 53 rated to me he looks better as a winger so i'm going to convert him to a winger hopefully he does shoot up in overall it would be quite nice in fairness but hopefully these three do end up in the starting 11 and our very first signing of this rebuild is bringing in the right back luther james wilden for half a million from stevenage meanwhile we have just sold and cj cola for just over 250,000. We've also just sent out Luca Hool on a one year loan deal. I've just brought another player this time, a centre back by the name of Joel Felix. The Danishman cost us 750,000. I did decide to loan out the Slovakian Youth Academy player Pavel Rybar in the end. I think personally this is the correct decision as he'll get a lot more game time there than he will at our club. He's there for two years. And this is how the team is looking going into the first half of season one after that transfer window has come to an end. If I'm being honest, I'd say we've got one of the strongest in league two at the minute i mean obviously in real life bristol rovers are in the top six so by the midway point of the season i would like us to replicate some in real life form from bristol rovers and be at least in the top six you're definitely in contention for promotion at the halfway point of this season we are top six but only two points behind second place colchester but i think sutton united are running away with it quite a bit at the minute our first bit of business is sending out cameron hargreaves on a two-year loan deal i'll be honest with you we didn't do anything in that transfer window we haven't got the money to bring anybody in and nobody really came for any of our players so this is how the team is looking it's pretty much identical to what it was at the start of the season apart from the fact that most of them have massively improved during the course of the midway point Gardner is one overall rating shy of being 70 rated overall at just 16 years old this man is gonna be special I'm definitely expecting promotion this season so at the end of season one we have secured promotion to league one which in fairness is brilliant Brilliant. Hopefully, in real life, Bristol Rovers can do the exact same thing. I believe in League 2 as well, it's the top three that get automatic promotion. And then it's fourth place to seventh place that fight for promotion via the playoffs. So if I am correct, it's Colchester, ourselves and Forest Green automatically promoted to League 1. And the fight for promotion via the playoffs is Tranmere, Salford City, Scunthorpe and Leighton Orient. It is Salford City who join us in League 1 after what looks like an intense final. Salford won 5-4 on penalties after drawing one all in normal time. Meanwhile, it was Villa who won the FA Cup, Liverpool won the Carabao Cup, Portsmouth won the Papa John's Trophy, Final won the Europa Conference League, PSG for some reason were in the Europa League but ended up winning that anyway, and it was Manchester City who won the Champions League. Dexter Gardner ran the show this season, 20 goals, 4 assists and has improved to 72 overall at just 17 years of age. Definitely gonna be one to keep hold of for this rebuild. By the time he's 20, I am putting money on it that he's over 85 rated. Right Ryan Loft also had a decent season, 14 goals, 4 assists, going up to 64 rated. Nicholson from the right wing position, 13 goals, 3 assists. Anthony Evans as well, going up to 68 rated, 12 goals, 4 assists. I have also included Isaac Thomas into the squad now. He's 16 years old and he's improved 12 overall this season alone, so hopefully it's more of the same in the seasons to come. We have made a tremendous start to this rebuild, gained automatic promotion from League 2 to League 1, so hopefully in Season 2 it's more of the same. 
In season two, we've been given a massive increase in budget. We've been given just over five million. Our first bit of business this season is signing Alex Mitchell, the English centre back, 20 years old, and he came for one million pounds. We've definitely done well to get our hands on this guy, Charlie Calman. The American came from QPR for just 1.5 million. We've also just somehow picked up Arnau Comas on a free. We also just picked up Jason Pendant on a free as well. We have made our first sale of this transfer window in selling Aaron Collins for just under 1 million. We have also just brought in another central midfielder by the name of Esteban Valencia. We have brought him for 2.2 million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end and there is a massive improvement in this side comparing this to how we looked this time last season. I'm not too sure where we're actually going to finish this season. I'm not too sure how strong League 1 is but I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping for another automatic promotion really. So at the midway point of this season we are in the top 10 it's not ideally where i'd like to be i'd like us to be maybe in the top four maybe top two even but considering it's our first venture into league one having no idea what the standards are like in this league top 10 is definitely a half decent start promotion is definitely still on the cards we begin this transfer window by selling trevor clark for 700,000. we have genuinely just struck gold with this one david larubia has come on a free 20 years old already 70 rated man i'm buzzing with this one we have also just brought in this man carl jenkinson on a free and this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end la rubia i cannot believe we got this guy still 20 years old 70 rated definitely a massive signing for the future also picking up carl jenkinson going straight into that starting 11 30 years old 67 rating not bad at all next thing i really want to improve is probably going to be the goalkeeper if we do get promoted to the championship we're definitely gonna to have to get a goalkeeper in the 70 rated higher because the championship as we all know is a different ball game in career mode speaking of the championship hopefully we do go up this time but if we don't it wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world all it would mean is we have more time in league one to build our team up to make them a lot better so that when we do go into the championship we've got a better chance of storming it and going straight to the premier league the season after well we have come to the end of the season in league one and we just miss out on the playoffs that has gotten to be fair we were five points outside of the playoffs in the end sixth place wigan athletic did take that spot so it is between wigan athletic plymouth argyle hull city and blackpool in the playoffs rotherham and peterborough go up very comfortably in the end in fairness to the championship automatically and in the end it is Plymouth Argyle who get promoted to the championship via the playoffs Pie Face is definitely having fun in this rebuild and you guys say my rebuilds are realistic Port Vale getting to any final is unrealistic Man United won the Carabao Cup Leighton Orient beat us to win the Papa John's Trophy Borussia Mönchengladbach won the Europa Conference League Bergamo Calcio won the Europa League and it was PSG this time who won the Champions League Jesus Christ, Dexter Gordon has gone up to 79 rated this season, jumping up from 72 to 79, bagging himself 23 goals and 12 assists. That is 35 goal contributions in 55 games. That's pretty impressive. That is Sam Nicholson, 12 goals, 2 assists. Kalman has not had a good season at all this time. That's, yes, fair enough. He's gone up to 70 rated from 65. That is good. That's decent. But scoring 8 goals all season nah not happy with that one needs improvement for next season isaac thomas is coming through for me a little bit here just under 70 rated at 17 years old maybe this guy could turn out to be as special as dexter armstrong here's one for the stoke fans glenn whelan is still going strong at 39 years old at 47 rated go on son i think because we didn't get a promotion this time it's actually benefited us a little bit because next season we can buy for positions that we're not that strong in bolster the squad strength and then hopefully next season by the end of it we will have gained promotion to the championship where realistically speaking we should be a hell of a lot more prepared for it this season we've been given just over five and a half million now i wanted to play this season a little bit smarter yes the midfield is probably one of our strongest assets apart from the tacking lineup of course we've brought in ricardo ortega on a free 70 rated at 18 years old i couldn't say no to that realistically we've also just brought in sturki yakis on a free as well this has definitely been our most successful transfer window so far we have brought in the ukrainian right back Joachim kanopliya for just under three and a half million meanwhile we have just sent out harvey saunders on a two 
three year loan deal and after that transfer window this is how i've got the team lining up now i'm aware that this formation has somewhat changed i've got larubia playing a little bit more to the right but still a central attacking midfielder and i've got ortega playing a pure cdm role i'm aware that it leaves a little bit of open space on the right side of our pitch but it's fifa i don't think it really matters all that much we definitely think that we are getting promoted this year if we don't i'll be very very disappointed with how strong our team is for league one i think it's safe to say that halfway through this season we are dominating league one we've only lost three games all season we're 12 points clear of second place mk dons i think promotion is in the bag this time we've just sold alex mitchell for one and a half million i'm absolutely amazed at how good this team has become over the course of the last couple of seasons man the only place i really need to improve is the left back i'm bringing in another very good center back to partner up with arujo comas all the signings that we have done in the past couple of transfer windows have come in clutch hopefully we can replicate the first half of this season's form take it into the second half of this season and we will be in the championship before we know it as we reach the end of this season it's safe to say we've absolutely annihilated league one we were 26 points clear at the top of the table in the end second place reading do gain automatic qualification alongside us but it is hull city accrington stanley wickham wanderers and sheffield wednesday in contention for promotion to the championship via the playoffs and it was accrington stanley who won the playoff final against sheffield wednesday to gain promotion to the championship alongside ourselves and reading meanwhile it was man city won the fa cup they also won the carabao cup napoli won the europa conference league Dortmund won the europa league and psg won the champions league it is safe to say charlie calman turned up this season from nine goals to 23 goals and one assist that is more like it that is why i bought him gardner 84 80 21 goals 11 assists 33 goal contributions in 52 games like neither say anything else valencia and laruba gained double figures a piece this time laruba has gone up to 77 rated holy shit this guy for a free was an absolute bargain as it thomas is slowing down a bit i think maybe it is time to look for a winger next season alongside with another center back and a left back if we get those positions sorted we're definitely in contention for automatic promotion in the championship next season and then it is the big boy league the premier league season we've been given just over 11 million our first bit of business in this transfer window is truly a big one we have brought in the mexican fullback omar campos on a free meanwhile we have just sent ryan loft on a one-year loan deal and we've also just sold luther james wilding for 890,000. we are doing bits when it comes to free agents we've also just picked up tendon mengi on a free as well we have also just sold joel felix for one and a half million and this is how the team moves going into the first season into the championship and i'll be honest with you i reckon this team is going to fully destroy the championship. We have been very fortunate in the fact we brought Mengi and Campos on a free. By the midway point of this season, I reckon we'll be in the top four. And at the midway point of this season, we are currently sitting second place in the championship, only four points behind league leaders Watford, and it is looking very good to say the least. We're not quite storming it like I thought we would, but we're definitely looking good to going up in the first season that we're in the championship. Meanwhile, we just sold James Balshaw for just over 250000 So I was scouting the Italian league trying to find a proper decent right winger and i stumbled upon this guy yaya callum 23 years old 76 rated only 10.9 million and apparently this guy has got a shit ton of potential so i'm buzzing with this one we've also just picked up arvin sifuentes on a free just had a little bit more squad depth to the midfield this team looks freaking insane now i'm buzzing with this if we don't get promoted with this team there is something just a little bit of a messy if we do get promoted to the premier league next season the one thing i'm definitely going to focus on buying in is a new keeper because a 75 rated keeper in the premier league will just get his arse chewed up we will probably work on the defense upwards going into the premier league because the defense is by a mile the most vital part of the premier league you've got a decent defense you've got a decent shot to survive in the first season but we have to get there first so we did end up choking automatic promotion in the end we were 10 points behind second place Norwich were freaking miles behind bloody Watford it is always Watford and Norwich that tend to find going up together from the championship but nevertheless it is ourselves West Brom Fulham and Bristol City as well in the playoffs for a chance at the third place promotion so we played against Bristol City in the semi-finals of the playoffs beating them 3-2 on aggregate Fulham are our final opponents they are the last team we have to beat in order to gain promotion to the Premier League now the question is have we done it let's find out in three two one 
Come on! Bristol Rovers are in the Premier League next season. Beautiful stuff. With the squad that we've got, I can't believe we've had to go through the playoffs to do this. But we have done it, even if it was the hard way. Meanwhile, it was Chelsea won the FA Cup. Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. Monaco won the Europa Conference League. Liverpool won the Europa League. And it was Man City this time who won the Champions League. I don't know what it is, but when I do lower league rebuilds, the youth academy players I get at the start always tend to be incredible after three or four seasons. Look at this guy, Dexter Gardner. 20 years old, 88 rated with 40 goal contributions in 54 games this season. Kalman did all right as well. 17 goals, five assists. Thomas did actually, to be fair, I think I've been a bit harsh on Isaac Thomas. I brought in a replacement for him in Khaled because I didn't think he was doing well enough. He's done all right, to be fair. But I think I might send him out on loan next season just to hopefully get him improving a little bit more. Hopefully next season we'll have a bigger budget than 10 million to work with because if we're working with about 10 to 15 million, it is definitely going to be a challenge to stay in the Premier League. This season, we begin with just over 41 million. I said at the end of last season, the one thing I wanted to upgrade more than any other position in the team was the goalkeeper, and we have done just that by bringing in Dominic Livakovic for just over 25 million. Meanwhile, we have just sent out the youngster Isaac Thomas on a one year loan deal. Just done a little bit of a manners and brought in the Ox on a free. We've also just brought in Eddie and Ketia on a free as well. We're doing exceptionally well in this transfer window so far. Meanwhile, we just sold Jason Pendant for 1.8 million, and we've also just sent out Luca Hool on a one year loan deal. We've also just sold Sam Nicholson for 1.65 million. And this team, after that transfer window, in my opinion, looks ready for the Premier League. We've got a couple of players over the rating of 80. We've got Gordon, who's just under 90 rated. That's freaking ridiculous. Livakovic, Campos, and LaRubia are definitely going to be our strong points this season. I can see Callan and maybe Ortega improving as the season progresses. And Ketty, I cannot believe he got this guy on a free. I am buzzing with this pickup. 26 years old, 79 rated, an Arsenal reject, fair enough. However, for us, he could definitely do some bits. The board's main objective for this season is to avoid relegation at all costs. So hopefully this team is strong enough to do so. So we have reached the midway point of this season and we are actually doing pretty well, if you ask me. We are four points above the relegation zone, which is pretty decent with 13th place. To be fair though, a bad run of games could quickly change this season for us in a very bad way. So hopefully we can maintain the form that we We've actually got right now maybe push for even better form hopefully we can finish the season in the top half but that is reaching a little bit in terms of the quality of the team the one thing i love though spurs are second from bottom this rebuild is incredible i take that back i take that back right now arsenal top what the fuck is going on we do kick start this transfer window by selling one of our better players david larubia has gone for just under 40 million considering we got this guy on a free we have done exceptionally well with this one and i say i am happy with the replacement for larubia i am bold Bloody buzzing with this one. Matteo Piscina has come away from Real Sociedad for 34 million on the dot. And as well as that, I want to show you guys something really quickly. Breaking news. Bristol Rovers grab bargain. Now that is when you know you made a good signing. We have also just brought in Hans Bauer on a free. Meanwhile, we have just sent out Arvin Cifuentes on a short-term loan deal. And this is how the squad's looking after that transfer window. These visible improvements amongst the team. Campos has improved, Mengi's improved, Nketiah, Callan, everyone has gone up. Hopefully this does mean that by the end of this season, we won't be 13th place, we will be in the top 10. Hopefully that is the case, but that is still a pipe dream at this moment in time. There's a couple of places that we do need to improve before we can realistically expect a top 10 top 8 finish but we are well on our way to creating a european qualifying team we finished 12th place in the end which isn't bad at all considering it's our first venture into the premier league let's take a look at the bottom three. oh it's a shame i really really wanted spurs to go down west ham leads and newcastle united went down that is quite surprising, if I'm being honest. Spurs, unfortunately, won the FA Cup. Leicester City won the Carabao Cup. Pagomo Calcio won the Europa Conference League. Atletico won the Europa League. And it was Man City again who won the Champions League. Gardner and Ketty are realistically the only ones who actually showed up this season. Thomas, we had to bring Thomas back because Callan was doing dead well in fairness. He was going up like a rocket. And then he picked up a bloody injury that put him out for five months. But realistically speaking, guys, if you think about it, our first venture into the Premier League, we held a road. We didn't get relegated. We were almost top 10. We did finish mid-table, so it's not bad at all. Hopefully next season, the budget remains sort of the same amount so we can really start bolstering each position that we do need to upgrade, and then we can start pushing for top 10.
For this year, we've been given just under 34 million. And our first bit of business in this transfer window is selling Ricardo Ortega for 24 million. Now, I bet you're wondering why I've signed 36 year old Kevin Trapp on a free. It's quite simple A, he's free. Secondly, 83 rated. I'm aware that he will go down. But thirdly, he will be a very good second sub. When it gets to this point in career mode, all sorts of crazy stuff happens, like letting Thiago go for no money whatsoever. We have just picked him up on a free. And this one is definitely a very very good signing for us. We have just picked up Daniel Vivian from the Hertha Berlin for just under 39 million. We have also just signed Ben Johnson on a free as well. 26 years old, definitely a very good replacement for Hate Bauer. And we've also just picked up Harry Winks as well on a free, so we can go straight into that start in 11. Meanwhile, we have just sold Anthony Stujiakis for just under 8.5 million, and we've also sent out Pavel Rabar on a one year loan move as well. And this is how I've got the team looking after that transfer window has come to a close. There's no players almost under 80 rated apart from Mengi. Mengi, to be fair, I will be getting another centre back hopefully in the next transfer window i'm very aware that tiago's already dropped in and overall but for a free you can't really knock how good he is hopefully this year we'll be looking at a top 10 finish i'd like to think we've got the quality in the team now to accomplish that goal so we have reached the midway point of this season and we are indeed in the top 10 we're only two points behind manchester united seventh place manchester united that is quite an achievement in its own right we've definitely leveled up from last year i think the sign is that we've done this season have been quite clever we brought in some veteran players like Thiago. We brought in Winks, who's getting on a bit as well. And it's definitely worked out for the better, as you can clearly see. To begin this transfer window, we have had to sell Dominic Livakovic because he wasn't happy with his contract, even though at the start of the season we renewed it with more money. And he just wasn't happy, so we've had to sell him for 22.1 million. But we have replaced him with the German keeper Alexander Nubel for 20 million. We have also just sold Canopia for just under 10 million. And this is how we got the team looking after that transfer window has come to an end. There's a couple of changes that I want to make for next season and I'll let you know when it happens but I do actually believe that this team is good enough to get European football next year I don't think it's going to be Champions League do not get me wrong I'm not delusional however Conference League and the Europa League are definitely looking more and more likely as each transfer window comes to a close every single time we're not taking any losses it's complete wins every single time hopefully I'm right we can get a top six finish boys we are in Europe next season we have qualified for the Europa League getting a top six finish at the end of the season i am buzzing we're in tremendous company as well man city chelsea arsenal Wolves, liverpool as well spurs and united i'm gonna die just refer to arsenal as good company i take that back completely meanwhile sheffield united pulled off a shocking upset beating liverpool 3-2 in the fa cup final chelsea ended up winning the carabao cup sevilla won the europa conference league napoli won the europa league and it was by munich this time who won the champions league now this is shocking to me callan i'm not surprised that this guy did very well this season and Ketty it did well also Gardner had a shocker this season only nine goals and eight assists for someone of his caliber I must say though considering we got top six how the hell we did that with how little our team actually performed stats wise is genuinely incredible but being in Europe does mean a hell of a lot more money to work with next season so hopefully next season we can start bringing in genuine quality into the team this year, we've been given just over 62 million. Our first bit of business is bringing in the 33-year-old German centre-back Matthias Ginter for 16 and a half million. Now, I'm aware that he is 33. I'm aware that he will probably go down this season. But I'm thinking if we can get the best out of Ginter for at least one season, we've definitely got our money's worth. And we have brought in Portuguese fullback on Charlo Estevez for just over 25 million. So we have just done a swap deal with West Ham United. We have swapped Harry Wings for their player, Victor Klaus. And I'll show you in just a second and they've also given us 290,000 So this is Victor Clausen 75 rated 18 years old and he's showing great potential Which is exactly why I wanted him and this is a little update on how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end Obviously our midfield three has been a little bit changed We've got Clausen and Sifuentes instead of Harry Winks and Thiago I want to give Clausen a run out. I want to see what this guy can do. He showed great potential So hopefully he can shoot up like a rocket by the midway point of this season. Ginter's 83 rated 
limited. Obviously, he's gone down one overall already. But with the game time he's going to get with us, at worst, he's going to go to 81 rated. We are in either the Conference League or the Europa League. I'm not too sure. Let's go see. So we are in the Europa Conference League, joined by Al ASK, St. Trudin, and Molde FK in Group A. Now, I'm not being funny. We should absolutely storm this group. No questions asked. So like I predicted, we did top the table. We swarmed this group quite comfortably in the end. Three points clear with second place, Molde FK. Al ASK and St. Trudin didn't really put up much of a fight. So it is ourselves and Molde FK through to the knockout stages of the Europa Conference League. However, in the Premier League, we are doing nothing short of freaking shit. We are 13th place. We've gone backwards in the Premier League, man. I don't really know what to do in the Premier League. I can't even sugarcoat it. We are doing absolutely shit in comparison to last year. Last year, I think we were 8th place at this point. Now we're 13th. Something has to change. We've had an offer for Eddie Nketiah that we just couldn't refuse. He's been sold for just under 51 and a half million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window. If you take a look at the team, you'll notice that I've put Gardner as a striker now and if you take a look at his stats you'll see why 95 pace 96 shooting 96 dribbling 73 physicality five star skills five star weak foot he's the perfect striker and that's why we brought Sinistera to take his place on the wing next season though I want to focus on the central midfielders I want to focus on the centre back and maybe another keeper hopefully we win the conference league because I cannot see us doing well in the Premier League we are shit it's official we are so shit how can we go from finishing in the top six to to finishing 15th place within two seasons of each other it just doesn't make sense arguably now we've got a better team literally our only hope is if we've done well in the conference league otherwise we are so screwed going into next season we did however get to the final of the fa cup but somehow palace beat us 3-1 Arsenal won the carabao cup and it's the moment of truth did we win the conference league hopefully we did yes come on we beat standard range 1-0 in the final so we have got europa league next season somehow after finishing 15th in the Premier League. Chelsea won the Europa League and it was PSG won the Champions League. Callan Gardner and Pessina definitely carried us this season. 28 goals, 17 for Callan. Gardner got 28 goals, 5 assists and Pessina 15 in 9 from the cam roll. We don't need to touch the strikers. We don't need to touch the cam, the fullbacks or anything like that. We just need a centre-back and two central midfielders and we'll be good to go. We begin this season with just over 85 million and the reason for this is because at the latter stages of the last season we had to let go of Alexander Nubel and we let go of Hate Bauer. So one thing we definitely do need is a goalkeeper. We've definitely picked up a very good goalkeeper with this one. I'm almost certain this is Kasper Schmeichel's regen but we did pick him up from West Ham United for just over 33 million. And we have found our sense about the Dutchman Mickey van der Ven has come from Augsburg for just over 25 million. We've also just brought in the American Joe Scally on a free. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window this is our team going into the europa league apart from these two central midfielders this team is freaking insane definitely need more squad depth but i'll sort that out in the next transfer window our front three is ridiculous the scene is ridiculous our back four is brilliant now johansson 20 years old 82 rated definitely got no issues with him i'd say this season's definitely going to be more positive than last season and in the europa league we are in group d joined by azsk sturmgrass and after Yol FC. Again, I think we should quite comfortably storm this group. And once again, as I predicted, we absolutely killed it in Group D of the Europa League. We didn't lose a single game. 14 points out of a possible 18. Doomgrass finished second with 9 points, but they were never really that close to us. Europa League's looking quite good. Let's just hope in the Premier League we're doing a little bit better. Right, this is far better. This is far better than last season. We're in the top 8, which is exactly where I want to be. I don't think we're quite ready for the Champions League yet, especially with the team we've got now that is definitely not ready we need to make a couple of more signings which we'll definitely make next season if not this season but we are definitely on the right track we have just made a hell of a sale here we have just sold the senior for just under 125 million our very first bit of business of this transfer window is bringing in the dutch central midfielder kenny taylor away from brentford for just over 32 million and to replace Pessina, we have brought in harvey elliott the englishman cost us 73 million and once again we have brought in another central midfielder this time by the name of Elliot Matarzo and he's just come for 41 million. What a difference selling one player makes. We sold Pacina for just over 120 million, and this is how our team 
loops now. It has completely transformed into an absolute beast of a team. I genuinely think not only will we win the Europa League this season, next season we'll win the Champions League. The players that we brought in, we've got a bit more squad depth to work with now. Like I've just said though, I think we will win the Europa League this year. We won the Conference League last year with a far worse team than we have now. So logistically speaking, you would think we win the Europa League quite easily. Definitely much better than what we did last season. We're in the top six once again. We bounced back from a really, really really shit season last season i don't know what the hell happened but it doesn't matter it's in the past if we are lucky we have won the europa league that means that we will automatically go into the champions league next season which definitely does mean a much bigger budget to play with which does also mean i know there's a lot of also means but it does mean that we'll be able to get a lot better players into this team improve the squad depth and hopefully take the champions league the first season we go into the competition meanwhile it was united who won the fa cup arsenal won the Carabao. Fiorentina won the Europa Conference League. Now this is the moment of truth. Have we won the Europa League? Come on. Come on! We beat Atletico Madrid as well to do it. Three, two, it ends. We are in the Champions League next season. Come on! How the fuck? Have they won the Champions League? I'll say this, putting Gardner as a striker. Holy shit, look at them stats. Mark my words, Dexter Gardner is going to reach 9-9 rated before the end of this rebuild. I'm telling you that for nothing. He's also got 45 goal contributions in 57 games. That's just remarkable. Harvey Elliott, he got 32 goal contributions in 56 games. Callon, 30 goals in 57 games. Taylor hasn't had a bad season. Sinistera hasn't had a bad season. In fairness, we've actually had a season where all the stats match where we are right now. Hopefully next season, we don't take a massive shit on all the progress we made this season and we just extend it further and further. I'm really disappointed with how much money we've got, man. We've got just under 65 million to work with. This is a mad one. At 36 years old, Allison is still 90 rated. And we've just managed to get him from Liverpool for 2.6 million. That is a madness. Meanwhile, we have just sold Joe Scally, the free agent we picked up a couple of seasons ago, I think it was, for just over 51.5 million. We have bolstered the midfield by bringing in Manchester City's Italian central midfielder, Samuel Ricky, for 60 million. We have added a little bit the squad depth to the wingers we have brought in Yusef Demir for just over 31 million and this is how our team looks now after that transfer window has come to an end the addition of Allison, the addition of Samuel Riki the addition of Demir it just all added up to a very very good team even if Allison's overall dropped a shit ton throughout the course of the season we still have got Joe Hansen there so it's a win-win do I think we've got what it takes to win the Champions League this time I'd say so, yeah. I mean, when you look at the team itself, why would you doubt it? And in the Champions League, we are in Group B, joined by Juve, Feyenoord and Olympiacos. Now, realistically speaking, it should be ourselves and Juve progressing to the round of 16. Feyenoord and Olympiacos realistically shouldn't pose that much of a threat to us. But at this point in the career mode, you never just know. So we did end up topping the group. After all, we won three, drew three, didn't lose a single game. We only conceded five as well, to be fair. Juve were closely followed by Feyenoord in the end. It was Oh, hang on. Okay, so the goal difference doesn't exactly add up there, but I, I don't really care. It's not our problem, it's theirs. Ourselves and Juve are through to the round of 16, so let's see who our new opponent is. And it is Atletico Madrid. We have not played Atletico this early in this competition, so this will definitely be interesting. And in the Premier League, we are not far off first place Spurs, are we? Let's be honest, Spurs, I just don't know why Spurs are doing well. I hate Spurs so much. Overall, this season, though, doing remarkably well. I think that's the first transfer window this season. We've done absolutely nothing in regards to sales, in regards to purchases, in regards to absolutely anything. I don't want to change anything in this team because, quite frankly, I do believe this team will win the Champions League this season. There's no reason right now why this team can't win the Champions League. We're beating all the big teams in the Premier League, like Liverpool, Man City, United, Chelsea. I refuse to say Arsenal and Spurs are a big team. But if we can beat them, we can pretty much beat anybody. But we do have to get past Atletico Madrid first in the round of 16. Got to say, though, that team, it's it's all right. They've got Martinelli, they've got Frimpong, they've got Baku, they've got All Black still. All Black has got to be getting on at this point, surely. I'm actually quite surprised that Alisson's still 88 rate. I thought it would have dropped to, like, 85 at this point. But nevertheless, away from home, 
game in the first leg of the round of 16 tie against Atletico Madrid. Can Bristol Rovers do the business? Yes, we can. 2-1 it ends. Gardner getting the first goal. How Felix, of course it would be him, getting the equaliser. And in the 68th minute, Sinistera gets us the W. The question is in the second leg, did we do enough in the first leg to put Atletico Madrid away? Can we knock Atletico Madrid out? Yes, we can. We did enough in the first leg. Harvey Elliott getting the first goal in the 26th minute. Of course, Al Felix. Who hells would it be? In the 53rd game, the equaliser. But it wasn't enough to get extra time for them. We knock out Atletico Madrid in the round of 16. you love to see it. I'm still buzzing we beat Atletico in the round of 16, guys. And now we face AC Milan. And I don't know many of them players. I'll be honest. They've got Maldini, Nestri, They've got Hernandez, Polinia, Tenali. Actually, I do know quite a lot of their players on second thoughts. But nevertheless, it's home at the Memorial Stadium. Bristol Rovers versus AC Milan. Quarterfinals, first leg. Can we do the business? One all it finishes. Gone again, the first goal. Maldini equalising in the 73rd. It is literally all to play for in the second leg. I couldn't tell you how this one's going to go, if I'm being honest. Our team's looking at them. I'd say we've got the better attack. I'd say they've got the better midfield just by an inch. I'd say our defence just nabs theirs. And I'd say Allison's better than mine now at this point in time. I don't know who's going to come on top. Let's find out. Can we knock out AC Milan? Yes, we do. We do it mega as well. We convincingly knock out AC Milan. Garner taking the lead in the fourth minute, followed by a goal from Ocampus in the 59th minute. Garner again, another one again in the 81st. And then Dicker gets a consolation. Doesn't matter though. We have knocked AC Milan out. We are into the semis. We've already taken down one of Real Madrid's biggest rivals in Atletico Madrid. Now it's time to take out Real Madrid themselves, their team. Probably one of the best teams we've come up against so far in the Champions League, ain't gonna lie. Look at that team, man. Graven Birch. Oh my god, they got Graven Birch and Kamavinga in that midfield. This one's definitely gonna be tough. I don't know how this is gonna go, but we are gonna quick sim this game away from home. Have we got. Oh my god! Sinistera gets the first goal, Vinny gets the equaliser, and then Gardner once again coming in clutch. For Bristol Rovers we proceed to the second leg with the advantage it all comes down to this can we knock out Real Madrid and book our place in the Champions League final in just our first season in the competition we've swarmed past pretty much everybody at this point we smashed the group stage smashed Atletico smashed AC Milan now it's time to smash Real Madrid come on do not let me down boys Oh my days, we've done it. 3-1 on aggregate, we end. Spanish Giants no more. Real Madrid get fucked. Callan gets the goal that officially puts the nail on the head for us going into the Champions League final. It's been quite some time since he's been in all English final in the Champions League on these rebuild videos. I can't remember the last time I played against an English side in the final, but it is Chelsea versus Bristol Rovers in the Champions League final on the 1st of June, 2030. That's how long this is taking, guys. 2030 is what year it is right now. But before we get into the final itself, I want to see how we've done elsewhere this season. Well, it's safe to say Chelsea dominated the Premier League after the first half of the season. Spurs bottled it, as per usual. That's no surprise there. FIFA being realistic for a change. We were 20 points behind Chelsea in the end. Spurs were 19 points behind them in the end. So, well, it's literally the champions of England versus third place in England in the Champions League final. Meanwhile, we did win the FA Cup, beating Wolves 4-3 on penalties in the end. Man City won the Carabao Cup. SK Sturmgrass beat Leicester City in the Europa Conference League. And Real Sociedad won the Europa League. I'm only going to talk about four players here. The first one, Dexter Gardner. One rating off 99 rated. Right, well that's not what I'm going to focus on right now. Played 60 games and in them 60 games he got 56 goal contributions. The man has had the best individual season I think I've ever seen during these rebuilds. Next up, we've got Luis Sinistera, the Colombian, got 26 goals and 7 assists in 59 games. That is incredible. Callum didn't do too bad either. 17 goals, 9 assists in 58 games. Harvey Elliott, 10 goals, 8 assists. These four have just carried us this season. The front four of this team is truly something to be scared of. I think there was certain points in this rebuild where I did some iffy transfers, where I could have definitely made better decisions at the time, but it is what it is. We're in the Champions League final at the end of the season, so it doesn't really matter. I know for a fact that keeper's a regen of Mendy. I know that back five is just ridiculous. That is actually such a good team, and let's be honest, this is definitely going to be a tricky game to play, but nevertheless, it is Chelsea versus Bristol Rovers at Sanderson Park in the Champions League final.
go, guys. Here we go. Sinistera is on the ball. Can Gardner find him over? Yes, he can. Sinistera is rapid, isn't he? Jesus Christ. Can we find Gardner? Gardner. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Can we get that to Callan? Callan. Uh, <laughs> that was easy. Oh, my God. Considering that's supposed to be Mendy's regen, he's not acting like him, is he? We take the lead in the most bizarre way possible. What the hell was Mendy doing there? Like, I'm, you know, I'm just going to call him Mendy. What the hell was he doing there? He came out and then just stopped himself. And then he lets in one of the most soft goals you'll ever see. On Oh, my God. He literally nutted. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for a better start to the game, if I'm being honest. We are 1-0 up inside the first 10 minutes. City Stara finds Gardner. Gardner, can he find Sinistera on the return? Yes, he can. Sinistera is against Koundé. Sinistera's got the pace to take everybody out. Can he finesse this? Oh, oh, what? oh no, you are kidding me. How did we miss that? Gardner, can you make a run, lad? Can you make a run? Can anybody start making runs, for goodness sake? We're too static. Callan's on the ball. Can he find Gardner once again? Gardner picks it up. Oh, what a save from Mendy. That is the half-time whistle, and we go into the half-time break. 1-0 to the good, courtesy of quite a fluky goal from Callan, if I'm being honest. Don't know what Mendy was playing at. But if we look back at the first half, I think we deserve to be in the lead. I mean, the stats back up what I've just said anyway. Another 45 minutes of that, and we've just successfully made Bristol Rovers the best team in the world. Havertz is on the ball. I do not like this at all. Ah, get him off the ball. No. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Chelsea get one chance. There you go. One fucking chance how many times did i try to tackle him here oh do you know what that shit defending for me to be fair right heads in the game one all let's go oh gardner gardner gardner's taking them all on here oh come on sinistera can he find gardner gardner's put the ball up he's taken out kunde right can we lose oh there's so many of them like chelsea man do you even attack oh i'm gone i'm gone He's just fucked up there. We find Harvey Elliott. Oh, Harvey Elliott. Oh, oh, no way. There's no... Oh, my God. That has got to be the flukiest goal I have ever scored on this game. Oh, my God. Just when I was complaining that Chelsea never attacked because all the players were at the back, we get the... Oh, look at that. Like, you can't get more lucky than that on this game. The AI literally gifted me the goal there. But I will take it. Bristol Rovers are now 2-1 up. We've got Gardner here. Gardner is so big as well. We're going to send it straight back to Sinistera. Sinistera, can he find Harvey Elliott? Harvey Elliott's all alone. Oh, come on, man. You've got to be burying that from that position, Harvey. Come on, lad. Oh, my God, Harvey. Harvey is through. Harvey Elliott is through. Harvey Elliott is through. Can he finish it? Oh, and it's done. And it's done. One of the tidiest finishes you can imagine. Bottom left bin. Finesse shot. You'd just love to see it. Harvey Elliott has successfully got us the victory. He's put the nail in the coffin. Beautiful layoff from Gardner there. Harvey gets the ball, takes it away from all the defenders, outpaces him, and just as calmly as you like, composed as hell, finesses it bottom left bins. We are now the champions of Europe. It's got to be over soon. It's got to be over. It's got to be over now, surely to God. Past the three-minute mark. Come on, ref, blow the whistle. There it is. We have taken Bristol Rovers from League 2 to the top of the goddamn world and winning the Champions League. They are officially European champions. They've carved their name in history. Courtesy of goals from Callan and Harvey Elliott, we put Chelsea away in the end. That was definitely one of the most challenging rebuilds I've done in quite some time. Nothing we seem to do would bloody work for us in like season 6 to season 7. We finally cracked the code though and we made it happen. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, smash the hell out of that subscribe button. I put a hell of a lot of effort into making this video for you guys. That is all from me. It's been your boy Gordon. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and until next time, I'll see you later.